All right, so today we're trying something new. I've never done this. Um, and Jesus Christ, I've got to fucking finish this rice. So today I will finish this rice, fa like finally. So let me let me show you what I uh, what I'm planning. So I have a lot of um, ground beef. I believe this is it. Yeah, this is ground beef, and I want to make a, a meatloaf. Okay, I usually do meatballs. If you see my uh, previous videos, this time I want to try a meatloaf. Uh, you may ask. What ingredients are you going to put in the meatloaf? I have no idea. I'm picking random stuff. These are from today. So, uh, usually meatloafs uh, have uh, vegetables and meat, okay? So we'll be trying to replicate that. That said, you know, I'm not, I am not conventional, a bit special. And uh, since I have to finish the rice, I will add some rice into the meatloaf. Now, you may ask, bro, what the fuck are you doing? So, this, I'm doing this, okay? The pleasure hypothesis, the six pillars. So we have uh, in the meatloaf, we usually have a lot of umami because we are uniting uh, vegetables and meat. Usually vegetables and meat have umami on, on, like, on themselves, but when they are mixed, you have to understand that there is like a, a chemical reaction happening that is basically enhancing the umami perception. There is like nucleotides and other shit, like messing science, okay? So umami is taken care of by meatloaf itself. Fat is taken care of by uh, the meatloaf, you know, the, the, the ground beef, okay, and also I will add some uh, butter. Uh, also salt is uh, taken care of by salt, I will add salt. So we have these three. Acidity, I will need to add acidity. The sweetness is taken care of by vegetables, and we have to add digestibility and acidity. Basically, a meatloaf satisfies these four, so I will need to add these two by myself to make it even better. So, uh, some rice, I will need to use some... Uh, so I'll take this guy, this guy will use, I uh, will use it to mix all of the ingredients together, it's metal. And uh, I will cook the meatloaf in, uh, I don't fucking know, like this, this thing, yeah. Jesus Christ, it's very sound, uh, powerful. So I will take some, Jesus, no, it's too hot, I know if I can, I don't know if I can still use this. Mm, yeah, uh, not really. Mm, I'll use it anyway. So let's add as uh, digestibility. And here we have it. So since we are gonna mix uh, everything with our hands, I'm gonna wash them. All right, so I feel dirty when I don't wash my hand. Let's add some rice, some salt, and then we will uh, put a uh, parchment paper there and we'll cook everything there. First of all, we are going to mix the, the, the ingredients, the, the vegetables, the meat, the, the acidity stuff. And, so, and I'm also going to show you a, like a simple trick to make things more umami. And I don't think I will use it here because this is very umami already. I don't think I need to add more uh, umami. And I just realized that I will not be able to finish the rice. Uh, well, fuck. No, it doesn't matter. So, let's add the, the salt before I forget. Just roughly we do, I will taste it later. And I will take the ground beef. This is one kilogram of ground beef. All right, so. Good. Uh, yeah, a bit more. Yeah, this will do. What do you think? Mm, yeah. Uh, I'll leave it here in case I, I want to use it again. And I will chop some vegetables. Okay, this time I will use a cutting board. I will use this one because it's already uh, dirty. Let's clear the, the bread. Usually uh, in the meatloafs, they often like, don't, they don't use uh, rice, but they often use uh, bread. So instead of using bread, I'm gonna use uh, rice. Not because uh, rice is better, but because rice has digestibility as well as bread. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'm basically, oops. I'm basically swapping, it, swapping that out with, uh, with rice. So we'll take some celery, uh, which is a little bit sweet and 
I think it adds some uh, umami because it, ha it has like one of those things that uh, amplifies the umami perception. So we use some celery. And I'm gonna wash a few sticks. Yeah, three sticks will be good. I don't know, like, I don't think the celeries are conventional, uh, are conventionally added to, to meatloaves. But you know me, I'm not conventional, I don't give a fuck about conventionality. If I was, if I needed to be here and care about flavors and uh, this, all of this stuff, oh man, I would never, would have never stopped to eat like junk food, you know? If I had to cook uh, by, by recipes and flavors and all of that bullshit, I would still like be eating junk food because I cannot cook considering all that stuff because at the end of the day, like I, the reason I'm telling you this is because when I did used to um, worry about flavors and uh, spices and shit, I didn't, and I didn't focus on those. You can focus on those spices, absolutely. But if you don't focus on the six pillars, your food will suck, okay? I, I did focus once when I was cooking vegetables at, at the beginning of, of my journey, and I didn't include the six pillars. I was not, I was not aware of them. So I was basically going uh, by co on cooking by means of, uh, you know, uh, flavors. Uh. Garlic, turmeric, smoked paprika, and red pepper flakes. On the screen, I have a list of a few spice blends that you can look at, you can use. I was adding uh, spices to my to my vegetables and was like, bro, why do they suck? Why are they still awful? They taste awful. Well, that's simple. I was not adding enough salt. I was not adding enough uh, oil. Okay, salt is more important uh, for the vegetables because I, I st for some reason I still like uh, vegetables that don't have a lot of fat, but I, I cannot withstand vegetables that don't, that don't have a, a lot of salt. So yeah, salt very important. It was my, one of my first uh, lessons about uh, cooking, like my, my first mistakes. And uh, now I got all six of them, I, I cut them all. So, I'm cutting them very, uh, a bit finely because, uh, but actually I don't know where I am. Because I guess I don't want to, when I bite through a piece of, piece of meatloaf, I want it to be a little bit more incorporated. So, these are the vegetables, and uh, I will basically mix it, mix it all, Oh, let me turn on the, the oven. You don't have to... Um, okay, let's leave it that. You don't have to... like. Uh, it is not a requirement to have the oven preheated. But, like, I usually, if, I, if you forget, you don't have to, like, uh, turn on the oven, wait for it to be preheated, and then put the, the tray in. You can just, like... Uh, you can just uh, turn on the oven and put everything in. The only reason I'm doing this is, is it is because it will cook faster if the oven is preheated. But being the preheated is not a necessity. It's not something you have to have uh, no matter what. So yeah, don't don't don't, don't bother if it's not preheated uh, and you forgot. For example, like I always do, I always forget to turn on the oven. Okay, it's just a, a time uh, constraint. It will not affect the the final product if you add. Uh, the product, the, the meatloaf, uh, midway, like, preheating, okay? I don't know if I got the point across. <clears throat> I don't know if I got the point across. Okay, my English is on points today. I don't know, the, the GoPro has a limited battery, so it may turn off uh, any moment. It was like 30% when I uh, powered it on, and I don't know how much is now. Why am I cutting tomatoes? I can just squeeze them in. I'm retarded. Let's see if I don't splatter everything. Yeah. Kind of. I will have to mix them anyway, so I, I don't need to squeeze them now. Uh, same reason I'm, cu I'm cutting onions. Is, uh, same reason, sorry. Same reason I'm cutting tomatoes is the same reason I was cutting them, because I, I wanted them to be evenly spread throughout the meatloaf. Are they enough? I, I, I may as well use them all. I don't want to keep those tomatoes in the fridge like I did with my rice. <laughs> so I will cut all of them. Bam. So, I got everything here. I will add some olive oil. Oh, here's my father. I will actually, yeah, this will be enough. And mix everything. If I had, I would, I would have added some, uh, um, how do you call it, um, some uh, crushed, uh, like, potatoes, you know, some, I would have boiled some potatoes and crushed them into, the, into this, this meatloaf. Maybe the, the texture would have been cool. 
but yeah, this will do. You know what? I think I have to add something else. It's too um, too solid. I don't like it. I, I feel it, like it has to have more things. I think it would be delicious either way or this way, but I think maybe more vegetables would benefit this, uh, this meal. So let's see if I have something uh, that I can add. Uh, I don't think I... I think I have nothing. You know what? Yeah, I think I have nothing. Oh, wait. What's this? Cucumber. Mm. If it was like zucchini, it would have, would have been perfect. Zucchini are really, really sweet, and uh, they would have gone well with that. You know, you remember, I'm looking at sweetness, the, the six pillars, not the, the aromas, okay? You know what? There is that thing there. I will reach for that, like, tomato or something. Yeah, I'll use this one. Is this, like, good? Wait. Oh, wait, it is spicy. Holy fuck. Luckily, I tasted it. I was, I was about to add something like really hot. Where is the tomato motherfucker I usually used? I think I finished it, you know? So you know what? I will use some onion. Yeah, let's go with onions. Two onions will be good. Okay, notice here how I will use this box to take care of the skins, okay? I will basically put any scrap uh, of, uh, of what I'm cutting. Let me put this away. So I can forget about it. Bam. Maybe I should have used some uh, some cellophane. Maybe I don't know. This will do. All right. So wait, I'm recording, right? Yes. So let's cut the the top. Put this here. This is how I usually cut onions. If you want, I cut off the the top part, not this one, not the root. The root is useful. Now it because it will keep the the onion for, from like falling apart when I cut uh, through it. So we'll cut it in half. I can cut through the root. You know, the root only is here now. There is no root here, but who cares? Doesn't matter really. So let's take the skin off like this. Can you see guys? It's, it's like too low light maybe. Yeah, let's do it like this. And this is like peeled. Now we need to cut it. I will also peel this and do the same thing with that. So I'm gonna cut and uh, see you there. Okay, sorry, I wanted to interrupt the time travel because I wanted to show you this step again. Let's see if I can get this right now. Yeah, I split it in half. Look, this you see now the half of the root is here, now half of the root is there. Uh, it will work either way, it doesn't have to be precise because look, this is still holding, kind of. Okay, maybe not, but it doesn't have to be the most precise thing. This will cut uh, great anyway, look. I will just cut this one and, and then cut the rest later. Look, cut, cut, and then it will hold pretty well, right? So let's go for the, let's go back to the space uh, time travel. Okay, I'm gonna take the opportunity uh, to show you that, you know, this peel is not coming off really easily, okay? So when it is like very hard to get the peel off, I will just take one layer and will sacrifice it and yeah, this will make things very quick. So, okay, now we have all of the, the onions uh, ready to be cut and I will uh, show you what I do. So. I usually cut in the in the middle. I don't cut through the root. I just stop like a little bit before. And use you, you can use one of these knife. Look, I have a knife. For those of you who tell me I don't have to cut the the onions with this knife, I, I get a lot of comments about it. Um, a lot. I mean, uh, two comments about it. <laughs> They're not a lot, but uh, I use this this knife, and you have to cut it uh, like wedged. Okay, you have to make a wedge. Don't. You can also do it. Uh, vertical that is also fine. I found this is a bit uh, more contained. Okay, that's a bit better But as long as you cut the onion, I don't think you have to stress over too much of it. Okay So I'm gonna cut the over uh, the onion pretty roughly Okay, now I cannot cut it this way anymore because it's like sleeping. So I will tip it over and Cut it this way. So uh, the last pieces are a bit big uh, It doesn't really matter to be honest. I'm fine with having a little bit larger chunks of onions, they will not kill me. Hence, there will be a good, you know, uh, sign of homemade meals, you know, when something is not perfect, it feels nicer. Uh, instead of having, like, the perfect fabric, uh, uh, you know, factory perfect uh, products, okay? It's nice to have some imperfect stuff once in a while. So let's flip it over again, because it was like, I, I could not, I would, look. This is happening, so I will let it go with the with the way it's going. All right, this can go in. Last one. 
I'm really curious to see if uh, me speaking in the video is gonna maintain the, the retention high enough or like I should really cut this section of the video where I, where I talk to no one while I cut stuff in the hope to keep the retention high. <laughs> um, but who knows, I will see in the future videos, uh, sorry, in the future days. If I don't know this yet. Uh, I don't have the an analytics yet ready for the other videos. So we'll need to see. Okay, onions are done, I can throw them in. Did I, go, did I do a good choice? Uh, I don't know. We will find that soon, but in theory, yes. Okay, in theory, in theory, yes. And that's all that matters, all right? Notice that while I'm doing all of this, I'm not creating that big of a, of a mess in the kitchen, okay? This is also one of the goals of my videos, like show you how I do things in order to not create a, a lot of like mess in the kitchen, cause like it's a bit, a pain in the ass to, you know, clean the kitchen and everything. So to minimize the, <laughs> to minimize, I don't know, like minim minimize the, the casualties, like uh, not to minimize the, the damage, you know, uh, do the things like I do, like for example, use that uh, cardboard uh, trick, okay? For example, there are many things you can do and I, I don't know if I can uh, name all of them while I, I cook, because I'm cooking and I'm talking, it's kind of hard to do both. So, you will have to catch them yourself. I think, think this will do a, a, a good meat off. Maybe it will be kind of hard, but I think the batch boats will, will release uh, enough water to make it not too hard, okay? This is why I added the onions. I would have liked uh, to add some uh, some potatoes because potatoes are full of water. And uh, like, this is the thing, foods often fool you. When you think they're not full of water, they, are, they actually are full of water, okay? Like meat is like, how much? 60% water. Like more than half is water, even though it doesn't seem like it, okay? The same goes with uh, most of the things. So I'm hoping that this, uh, this is also true for, for this guy. So yeah, so we got all of the uh, pillars checked. Oh wait, we don't have acidity. Acidity though, we added it through onions and tomatoes. They're both a little bit acidic. So I wanna, I'm gonna taste, not, not swallow, I will just put it into my mouth. Mm. Yeah. Salt is, is fine. Salt is, uh, is enough. Okay, now the trick I wanted to show you if you don't have enough umami. Um, if you follow me from a bit, I think you already know this, but what you can do if uh, a, a meal doesn't have too much umami is simply take, okay, open your closet or wherever the fuck you, you keep it and take this. The broth powder. Okay, bouillon, the thing you put into the water and it becomes broth. There is extremely umami, also salty, so be careful about that. But that's pretty much it, yeah. So, let me think. Yeah, I think that that's good. Let's take some uh, parchment paper. Again, if I could, I would have added, actually I can. I can add some, uh, some uh, bread to make it more, I don't know, uh, is this good? Oh, one, one, let me show you one trick. If uh, this is like hard to fit, no, actually it was good. But if it doesn't like fit well, you can like sh like uh, crush it in your hands and then open it and it will be easier to, to set up. Maybe in, in, a, in a future video, if it doesn't work, I will add it. You know what I was thinking about? To add some water, like some liquid to, to let it like, to uh, have it more soft. Maybe we can add an egg. Now I'm thinking, is this a good move? Who knows? I will do it anyway for science. Oven is ready, so we can uh, put everything in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just use one, see how it goes. So you may be wondering now, is this gonna be good? Well, I'm also curious to see, so I'm gonna have to report that later. But I'm pretty sure it will be good because I'm following the pleasure hypothesis. It never failed me. So yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm still kind of scared when I try new things because like I am myself, a little bit uh, astonished to see that every time I follow this hypothesis, everything turns out great. But yeah, I mean, doing this weird stuff, like who the fuck thinks about this? This is completely new and even though it's new, I still have a bit of fear, uh, sorry, even though I know it is going to be good because the six pillars, I still have a, a bit of fear because, I mean, it's kind of strange, like you grew up with the uh, mantras and the uh, taboos about cooking and what you cannot and what you can do in cooking, you know? Don't mix this with this, don't mix with that. But, so I mean, kind of, I, I still have some of uh, those, uh, you know, 
limiting beliefs. And I hope I can break them uh, over time. And I hope I'm breaking some for you because you see me cooking crazy stuff. <laughs> okay, so why did I wash my hands? I have to... <sighs> right. Inertia took care of this parchment paper. And uh, let's like flat this on the on the tray. I could add some breading on top to have it more digest to like to add so some uh, digestibility, but I think we got enough digestibility from the rice. And even if we didn't, I don't give a fuck. Okay, it will still be good. I don't need to overdo it every time. Like you know, to have a good tasting meal, you don't have to have all six of them. Uh, like just uh, five, uh, four, three of them are great. Okay, especially if you have digestibility. If you have digestibility, you can have just three or four. Like only three, including digestibility, would be great. Think about uh, a slice of bread with olive oil and salt. That's fucking great. Okay, this is only literally salt, fat, and digestibility. That's all it is, and it's still great. Okay, so I think this is good enough. How deep is it? I'm pretty shallow. I think this is great. It will cook faster if it is shallow because like, well, because yes, okay. With the, this tina. All right, so let's add it. And now as soon as I put this, I'm afraid that the GoPro will turn off because it's, I don't know the battery, but I think it's low. Oh shit, I forgot to, to take out the trays. <laughs> uh, it's very hot now. Ooh, fuck, almost burned myself. Okay, while I risk my life handling these very hot objects... Okay, I want to remind you that I have a, um, a special way to create yogurt, okay? I was using the oven, so that reminded me of the, of the yogurt uh, video. And I have basically a free video, uh, if you check the link in the description, there is a free video of uh, my secret, and I mean, I really mean it, like, it's very, like, you don't find it anywhere. Method to cook, to cook, um, sorry, to cook, to make yogurt, okay? <laughs> you will later find out what cooking uh, by, uh, anyway, I don't, I'm not gonna spoil anything. So, let's throw this away. And we have created little to no mess, okay? We found and uh, we, like, the way we found it is the way we leave it, you know? So let's put this away. So yeah, like, the, the yogurt video is free, you can download it. I have uh, a link, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the GoPro got um, um, finished the battery, so I had to went and charge it. I left everything how it was before it uh, cut off. So let's check the... Okay, no, it's, it's way more liquid than I expected. Look at that. Very watery, I don't know if you can see. So I'm gonna... That's good, didn't expect that to be honest. So let's... Uh, I forgot to, to add these uh, small bits, so I guess I'll take some of these and add it back to that. And now, since you are at it, you know what? What we can do. Okay. I will take it out for a moment, because I, I just realized that I didn't, didn't add that much fat, okay? So I will take it out and add a little bit more fat by olive oil. Okay, let's see if I can burn myself fucking today. If you have used one of those uh, things that are made for that, don't do like me. <laughs> All right, so oh, it does good, it does good, holy shit. Okay, so let's add uh, this, uh, this thing midway. Uh, I don't really care, it doesn't, like, it doesn't matter too much. Oh, but uh, the, the time is different, the, the cooking time is different, no one cares, okay? So I will do that. I also add some more olive oil. Because, because yes. So I will take some olive oil to add more fat. I mean, fat was there, but I, I like it more fatty. So yeah, that's good. The only reason I'm not using butter again is because it is way more convenient. Like it's uh, probably health, like, yeah, I mean, they are both healthy. So yeah, that's the, the reason I'm using butter now. So this oil will basically enable to brown, okay? It will enable this meatloaf to brown better. You see, the water that is being released from the vegetables and from the meat will only uh, let basically the meatloaf reach 100 uh, degrees Celsius. Because water, okay, either that it comes from meat, either that it comes from vegetables, water can only reach 
1000 CES, sorry, 1000, uh, 100 degrees Celsius. So, uh, oil, meanwhile, can reach higher temperature, okay? Water, uh, once it goes for to like 100 degrees, it will uh, become uh, vapor, it will evaporate off. So you cannot happen, like the Mahler reaction cannot happen, meaning the Browning reaction. Okay, so I think uh, we can start to, okay, this, I didn't do this. <laughs> My father did this, I didn't do this. I'm not I don't want to make any mess, okay? I'm just trying to show you that you can like do everything without too much uh, equipment and like save a lot of dishes to not wash, you know what I'm saying? So uh, this rice, I will put it back into the fridge, but I don't think it will last longer because it's been like five days. I put it back into the fridge just to clear up some space. Bam, bam, boom, spam. Okay, so we can, for example, uh, if I was uh, a very responsible person, I would just take some soap. Soap, by the way, is extremely powerful to to, re to uh, remove fat. This uh, was full of fat, and now it will be like fucking melted away. Look. I'm not saying. <laughs> wait, don't don't eat uh, don't eat soap if you want to lose weight. <laughs> if you want to lose fat, that will not work. So, um, basically, yeah, this clean as before. Look, bam. Clean. There may be some little uh, details to clean off, but I think I did a good job. And I will put this here, let it dry, and I will uh, put it back into the into the into the, the, the drawer. The drawer. The closet, the drawer. What's the difference? Jesus Christ. The closet. No, I think this is the drawer the drawer, yeah. The the thing where you put the, the thing, okay. Right, that's great. I didn't create any mess. I just have these uh, two guys out. I will back put. Uh, I will later put back it. Oh, the the, the meat. I forgot. <laughs> Don't forget to put the things back into the fridge. All right. Oh fuck! If I didn't, uh, I could have added the, the blueberries if I was not crazy enough. If I if I remember, I probably would have tried adding some blueberries. All right, so. I'll just wait for the for the meatloaf to let it do it, its things. So let's uh, I'll do a quick cut. Let me change travel. All right, so time travel done. And the the thing. Uh, oh yo, what the fuck is that, Auntie? Fast delivery. X. Thank you. Oh nice, great eggs. Yeah, that was my delivery man. Uh, he often brings eggs to my house. Ooh, very fucking hot. All right, that looks ready, you know? I mean, I could leave it anyway. Ch uh, sorry, I could leave it even more. It will, like, the more I cook it at this point, the more uh, the issues it, it will become. You can see, like, there is a, a bit of browning. Uh, some there, some there. All around there is some browning. The browning is delicious. This is, the, like, the best part. So, um, yeah. These are fresh eggs from, uh, directly from the... The, the farm. Thank you, delivery man. I will uh, put them into the fridge. And uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, I'll go for a train travel once again and I'll see you once that I feel like it is ready. Train travel done. I think this is ready. Oh, the, the, the delivery man came back. How you doing? Ah, I'm doing fine, thank you. Nice. I'm waiting for my food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's a delivery man. I am like the the, the cook. Uh, I cook for my delivery man. He, he has to <laughs> the way, yeah. I pay I pay in food. So uh, fuck, I wanna use the, the right thing now. Mr. Bushao was it worth? <laughs> All right. Woo. All right. Let's see. Let's stand it off. I think that's cooked enough. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I hope it tastes better than it looks. <laughs> no, it looks, it looks, uh, looks amazing. Let's try. Yo! Ma mi sembra buono, cioè dalla visuale proprio. Perché? Ma il polpettone non è mai stato una schiacciata. No, questo è il polpettone alla Fusco. Eh, Mitloff alla Fusco. È un po' salato. Mitloff? Non sapevo se è una serie. Lofka sarebbe così. Mid cylinder. Mid cylinder. Lof è tipo un loaf of bread. Lof. Tipo un. 
un non cilindro, sì, sì, un cilindro. Un mm. mid cylinder. Ok. Let's uh, bring this uh, to the dinner table. Uh, it, I think that's too salty, I don't know why. Let's uh, mi mi accendi la luce. That's uh, your more common mistake. Yeah, yes, I I addressed it in my in my video. Yeah, so let's take some uh, something to balance out the the not to balance out, literally to dilute this the <laughs> saltiness. Let's take some yogurt and I'll do with yogurt. Yogurt doesn't have salt, so it will like kind of uh compensate it. Yeah, compensate like de decrease the concentration of salt overall. Okay, that's uh, uh we don't have plates, wait. <laughs> the delivery man delivers the plates. And we also deliver some pasta. <laughs> 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 okay. Um I'll also take some sauerkraut. Okay, business dinner. Uh, what do we need? The forks or a spoon? You, you fork, you, I, I spoon. Where is the spoon? Uh, I have it. Uh... It's strange to talk, to talk English with an Italian friend. <laughs> I should let this like dry a little bit because like now it's very watery, so I think it will fall apart more easily. So I, I'll take a spatula and It'll be easier to transfer. Brucio, anche stato vaglia, vero? No! Ok. È tanto per due persone. Uh, yeah, it should, uh, this should have been for more than two, two people, two persons, but... But we need some bread. To, uh... Yeah, some bread. It's a good idea, digestibility. He, he, knows, the, he knows the pillars, digestibility. Yeah. Ok, I, I will cut it later, I will taste it before. Ah! Okay. So we are gonna taste it with our bread. Mmm, yeah. Delicious. Take a bite. Oh, it's fucking delicious. Incredible. Incredible.